Hi everyone, and welcome to another Rubrik demo. I'm Mike Preston, and today I'm excited to walk through a feature of our cloud native protection offering within Rubrik Polaris, and that's native protection for RDS. Databases are often the lifeblood of organizations, powering some of their most mission critical applications. And it's important that we're not only able to protect them, but we're able to restore them in a timely manner to any point in time. Of course, we also need a solution that's simple and easy to use. These are the main driving factors as to why organizations are choosing Rubrik Polaris to protect their AWS resources. Now, we've been supporting and protecting EC2 instances and EBS volumes within AWS for a while now. We've taken that same policy-driven declarative framework that you've grown to know and love and applied that to RDS. In terms of database support, we could protect and recover MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, Oracle, and Microsoft SQL Server running within AWS RDS. With Rubrik Polaris, you are able to easily recover your RDS databases to any point in time, ensuring minimal data loss and maximum availability. Backups are stored within the form of native AWS database snapshots, which means that your organization's data never actually leaves the compounds of your AWS account. Only metadata and mapping information is securely sent back to Polaris. Polaris is then able to orchestrate backups and restores for you, managing everything from RPO to retention, eliminating the need to manually manage the mundane processes of snapshot management. Even the initial configuration of enabling Polaris to connect to your environment is automated, setting up cross-account roles and policies through an executed CloudFormation stack. Polaris provides a fully automated, simple, and efficient way to provide cloud-native protection for your AWS environment. But don't just take my word for it. Let's jump into Polaris and run through the complete process, from configuration to backup to restore. So here we are in our Polaris dashboard, and the first thing we need to do is to enable RDS protection for our AWS account. To do this, we simply head to the gear icon and select Remote Settings. We then select RDS from the AWS dropdown and then click to add a cloud account. Here, we can add either a new account if Polaris doesn't know about it yet, or we can select an existing account within Polaris. This Rubrik TM account has already been set up within Polaris to protect EC2 and EBS. So let's go ahead and select it, basically enabling RDS protection on it as well. Now this allows customers to utilize that same cross-account role for both EC2 and RDS protection. This eliminates the need for any long-lived AWS credentials or secret keys, thus adhering to AWS's security best practices. So go ahead and click Next. Here we can restrict Rubrik's access to specific regions within AWS. This ensures the customer is always in control of their cloud environment. We already have North Virginia, North California, and Oregon selected here. These are good enough for me, so let's go ahead and click Next. And now we're going to be prompted to launch a CloudFormation stack, so let's go ahead and click that. The CloudFormation stack, which is built when we first enable EC2 or RDS protection, controls the creation of all of the IAM resources that Rubrik needs in order to provide AWS protection. This includes the creation of the cross-account role, and the appropriate permissions and policies which are assigned to it. Using CloudFormation puts control into the customer's hands and lets them see what exactly is going to be created or modified within their AWS instance. So let's go ahead and walk through this stack update. Click Next a couple of times. And on the final step, if we scroll down, we can actually see the changes that are going to be made within our instance. In this case, it's going to modify that cross-account role as well as that cloud account custom resource. If this was the first time that this account's been added to Rubrik Polaris, obviously it would say it was going to create these resources for us. We'll go ahead and acknowledge that we're going to be creating some resources and simply click Update Stack. Now we'll let this run through and go ahead and create those IAM resources and provide updates to the policies that needed to be updated. And when it's done, we simply head back to Polaris. All right, we can see we have an update complete status now, so let's jump back into Polaris and complete the configuration. We can see that Polaris has received all of the metadata around the created resources that's been securely sent back to Polaris. So we can go ahead and click Submit to finish the process. 
Now that this is complete, Polaris will begin scanning all of those defined regions that we gave it access to, looking for RDS instances which can be protected. Now, to view these discovered databases, we'll head up to Inventory and then AWS-RDS. So we can see that it's discovered a number of databases running within our RDS service. We have Microsoft SQL servers, MariaDBs, Postgres databases, and MySQL databases. Now, looking at four databases isn't a big deal, but in a lot of cases, our customers are running hundreds of databases. In that case, you could filter using the options on the left. You could filter by region, SLA domain assignment, instance classes, even which type of database is running. Furthermore, we can even drill down into what tags have been applied to an RDS instance and filter and search across that. Also, many of our customers utilize multiple AWS accounts, which is why we also offer support for visibility and filtering across those. And of course, in true rubric fashion, we have a powerful search functionality, allowing you to quickly find what you are looking for. So before we get into actually protecting these instances, let's take a look at SLA domains. SLA domains are essentially a policy-driven framework which define all the constructs around data protection. To view these, we'll head up to SLA domains, and I'll select the one that we'll be using today. We can see an overview of our SLA domain configuration here, but let's head to the ellipsis icon and select Edit so we can see all of the configurations available to us. The first thing we set up within an SLA domain is our RPO, or our Recovery Point Objective. Basically, this is how often we want to back up, and then we apply our retention, how long we want to keep the backups. This SLA domain is currently configured to take a backup every 12 hours and keep that for 7 days. Subsequently, we can see that it's configured to take a daily backup and keep that for 30 days. If we click Show More, you can see that we can get even more granular, taking weekly, monthly, quarterly, and even yearly backups, each with its own retention. This allows us to set up the exact data protection policy we need and adheres to some of the AWS well-architected frameworks, specifically around cost optimization. As the backups expire, they're automatically deleted, freeing up the storage and the costs that go along with that. And we can see a few other options here as well. We can set up our snapshot or our backup windows as to when we want our backups to occur. And since Rubrik applies a forever incremental methodology, meaning our first backup is a full, and then subsequently we only take incrementals, we can control when we would like that first full backup to occur. Also, since we're dealing with databases here, we can enable log backup for AWS. This allows us to provide restoration services to nearly any point in time by replaying the logs. As well, we can also specify a retention period as to how long we want to restore these replay logs. In this case, we're set to three days. Well, this all looks great. Let's move on. Click Next. The next stage is setting up our remote policies, or more specifically, our archival and replication settings. Archiving essentially takes older snapshots, or snapshots at the end of the chain, and migrates them off to a different location. Most often, this is cheaper storage, as most organizations prefer to move those older backups that they're required to keep for compliance to a more cost-effective location. On the flip side of that, is replication. Replication moves backups from the start of the chain, or our most recent backups. In this case, we can see that we're set up to migrate our most recent seven days of backups to a specified AWS region, thus providing us region-level availability for our applications. And finally, on the last page, we simply give our SLA domain a name and a description. So, with SLA domains out of the way, let's jump back into our RDS inventory and start protecting some databases. Now, there are a number of ways we can assign an SLA domain to an RDS instance. If we head to AWS Accounts, we can see that we're able to manage protection on an account level. We can select the account and then select to manage protection. When we assign an SLA domain on an account level, any existing databases within that AWS account are automatically assigned to the specified SLA domain. Furthermore, if any new databases are created within the account, they too would be automatically protected and inherit that SLA domain. 
meaning data protection wouldn't really be an afterthought as everything is automatically protected upon provisioning. Now we can also assign an SLA domain on an instance level. We'll head back to our RDS instances page and it's easy as selecting the instances that we want to protect and then selecting manage protection. Now in the case that we have an SLA domain set up on an account level and an instance level, the instance level would take precedence. This allows us to set a generic account SLA domain and then maybe set up a database within that account to say do not protect or to an SLA that maybe provides more frequent snapshots. All that said, we have one more way of signing an SLA domain to an RDS instance, and that's through something called tag rules, which is how we're going to do it today. Now, a lot of organizations utilize AWS tags to help organize and automate their AWS environment. And Rubrik Polaris fully enables organizations to stretch this tagging strategy into their data protection policies. Basically, a tag rule looks for a specific tag or set of tags or a specific set of tags and their values. And if the resource within AWS matches this rule, meaning it has that specific set of tags, it will automatically be assigned to the specified SLA domain. So let's set this up now. We'll head over to tag rules and then we'll select to create a new tag rule. So the first thing we need to do is give the tag rule a name. I'm simply just gonna call this one backup. Then we define the tag key and value pair that we want to match. As you can see, Polaris has already pulled in all of the existing tags within our AWS environment. In this case, I know that the databases that I want to protect are already tagged with the backup tag and a value of yes. Also, we can really get specific as to what AWS accounts we want to apply this rule to. As we mentioned previously, a lot of organizations utilize multiple AWS accounts. However, they have a common tagging strategy applied across them. This provides a simple way to apply SLA domains to their RDS and EC2 instances without having to jump through the hoops of multi-account management and whatnot. I'm going to go ahead and just apply this rule to the Rubrik TM account, and I'll select Next. Here, we simply select the SLA domain that we want this tag rule to apply to. In our case, we're going to select the one we went through and click Submit. Now, Polaris will go and scan the AWS environment automatically applying that SLA domain to our RDS instances, which have the matching tags. So let's head back over to RDS instances. And we can see that our SLA domain has been applied to four of the six databases. So obviously these two Nova databases in the middle have not been tagged appropriately within AWS. We can also see that our SLA domain has been derived from the tag rule backup. So all of these RDS instances are now assigned to an SLA domain and Rubrik Polaris will go ahead and start to run the database snapshots and perform backups as specified within the configuration. Let's give this a little bit of time to run a few backups and then we'll come back and take a look at what it actually looks like within the AWS console. Then we'll jump into some of the fun stuff, which is restoring. Okay, so we paused for a bit and given these databases some time to process some backups. Let's take a look at our ZFGHR database and see how it's going. First off, we can see we have a number of backups and restore points we can utilize. We can drill into each day by simply clicking on it. Here, we can see that we can indeed select any point in time by simply dragging a slider bar. If we scroll down a bit, we can actually see the types of snapshots that we have. First, we have our scheduled snapshots. These are snapshots which have been taking adhering to the SLA policy that we set up. And then we have on-demand snapshots. These are manual snapshots that we can trigger within the UI. Now, before we jump into a restoration, let's take a look at what this same database looks like within the AWS console. So let's select that same database within our RDS instance page here, the ZFGHR database. And then we'll head over to the maintenance and backups window. Here, we can see all of the database snapshots which have occurred. One thing to note here, these snapshots and backups reside within the customer's AWS account. At no time is a backup or snapshot transferred to Polaris. The only data that's sent back to Polaris is metadata around the snapshots themselves in order to identify things like tags and mappings, linking the actual snapshot to the time the backup was taken within Polaris. Customers are in complete control of their data, just as if they were managing the backups manually within AWS. As far as snapshots go within AWS here, we have a couple of different types shown. 
We have our AWS backup types. These are on-demand and policy-based backups, which are driven by Polaris. We also have automated snapshots. These are snapshots which have been taken by AWS through the automated backup utility. The automated backups contain the log information which is needed to replay to any point in time. As you can see, this database is set to keep three days worth of automated backups and logs, matching that in which we configured within the SLA domain earlier. Now this is an important note. In order to gain that log replay functionality, the automated backups within AWS must be enabled. With that said, let's imagine this HR database has been corrupt and needs to be restored. In order to do so, let's head back into Polaris. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is select our point in time to recover from. Let's say that uh, the corruption occurred around 10 o'clock, so we're gonna select sometime around 9 a.m. to restore to. From here, we simply click the ellipsis icon next to the desired point in time, and then select Export. Here we can see a number of options. First, we need to give the database a new identifier, and also select in which availability zone we wish to restore to. At this point, we can also change our instance and storage class as well. So if we wanted to give the underlying instance powering the database a little more juice, we can do so here. Also, during the export, we can choose to export the associated tags within the snapshot, meaning we won't have to go back into AWS to re-tag this instance once it's restored. It'll automatically match that which is set up on the source database. And if we wish, we can enable multi-availability zone support on the database or make it publicly accessible. I'll just accept the defaults here and click Next. Now it's time to set up the networking around our restored database. We can go ahead and restore this to a new VPC or the existing VPC, selecting things like new subnet groups, option groups, and parameter groups. We also need to select a security group at this point, where I'll just select the default and click Next. At this point, we get a summary of what's about to happen. I say we're good to go, so let's click Export. With our export kicked off, we can jump over to the Events tab on the database to monitor it. As you can see here, we're currently launching a new RDS instance with the desired instance name, matching that to the actual point in time we selected. We can get a little more information by drilling into the event itself. All right, so we can see that that instance has now been successfully exported. So let's jump back into the AWS console and have a look there. Again, we can see our new instance listed within the RDS page, and if we drill inside, we can see that everything has successfully restored. Now we can simply repoint our applications to our new endpoint, and we're good to go. Also, we can jump into the configuration page, and we can see that we can manage this exported database just as if it was natively deployed within AWS. We could do things like enable multi-AZ or add read replicas. Another nifty feature which saves us operational time and costs is the restoration of tags. If we look at the tags associated with our restored database, we can see that along with the Polaris-specific tags holding metadata and snapshot information, we also have our original tags that were attached to the source database. This is important for a couple of reasons. One, we don't have to go back and re-tag this database instance, making it compliant with our tagging strategy. And two, if you remember that tag rule we set up to parse the backup tag, well, this restored instance maintains that tag. Therefore, it will also be automatically protected by the SLA domain specified within that tag rule. And if we jump back into Polaris, we can see indeed that our newly restored instance is automatically protected with our SLA domain derived from that tag rule. As you can see, protecting your AWS RDS instances with Polaris is super easy. From an automated configuration with a CloudFormation stack, to a declarative policy-based approach to backup within our SLA domains, to fast and efficient restores of both your RDS instances and their associated tags. I hope you enjoyed this demo, and if you want to learn more about our cloud-native AWS protection, check out the description below for some resources. We have an amazing How It Works document, which goes very deep into the technical nitty-gritty on how we accomplish AWS protection. As always, any questions or comments, please reach out. Thanks for watching.